This program has been underwritten in part by L'Hermitage Hotel in Beverly Hills, California. Hello, welcome to Connie Martinson Talks Books. Well, there are two alternatives. You either die or you live. That was according to a man named Jacobowski. But if you're going to live, what's the quality of life going to be like? My guest, Art Linkletter, who is loved by America and the world all over, has written a book that is the greatest favor to anyone with an aging parent or to somebody who faces it themselves. The book is called Old Age is Not for Sissies, Choices for Senior Americans, published by Viking. And we will be back after a short pause to talk with Art Linkletter. Welcome back. We're coming to you from L'Hermitage Hotel in Beverly Hills from one of the penthouse suites. And we're talking with Art Linkletter, author of Old Age is Not for Sissies, published by Viking. Welcome, Art. Hello, Connie. And thank you, Art, because I have been reading this book. And as I read it, I would be talking with my mother or my sister. And my sister said, get me a copy of that book immediately. Uh, the good. advice in this book is both cohesive, comprehensive, and a big help. Well, I wrote it not to be an authority, but to give choices. I don't want to direct anybody's life. I want to motivate them to make a selection, light their fire, get them up out of the couch and in front of the TV or whatever is keeping them stationary and uh, making them find new ways to fulfill themselves in the years when that fulfillment is going to be different socially, emotionally, physically, and financially than all their other years. Yeah. It is almost like that Hollywood story of Bud Schulberg's The Year There Were No Christmas Gifts. The minute you are no longer an active person and the phone calls and the way you are treated is quite a bit different. Yes. And especially these days in our turbulent society for women, their children are not only grown up, but the chances are a thousand or more miles yeah. away. Yeah. Nuclear family has its curses. But this book starts to tell you, and what, probably the most valuable chapter I found, Art, is the one about there's more assistance and help out there that any of us know. The nursing home is not always the first resort. Right. I was surprised because as much as I've traveled and lectured and know about things, I had no idea there were all these organizations and yeah. activities that are available if people only knew that they were waiting for them. Okay, and including, I believe it is page, um, I, I wrote it down because I thought it was so important, uh, 92, where the assistance is, what the 800 number is. Yes. That assistance includes Meals on Wheels, being bathed at home, having visiting nursing care, and in most metropolitan areas, either through the organizations mentioned here, you can stay in your own home. I think that's the biggest threat. Yes. My favorite chapter, of course, uh, is something uh, a little less pragmatic. It's on attitudes, because yeah. I think from the time we're born until we die, our attitude towards others, towards ourself, towards life, kind of sets the pace for how we do everything. Well, you talk about the man in this book who, when you talk about attitude, he had been head of a corporation. And suddenly he's in the hospital with an illness that means he has to lift his nursing gown no matter who comes in. Yes. And does whatever he's told like a child right. instead of learning to say, wait a minute, who are you? What are you doing? That's right. Older people tend, by circumstance and the slow erosion of their independence, independence in thought and action and, and, and decision making, to become more childlike because they, assume, they, they accept authority. Yeah. Yeah. The doctor tells them something and they don't dream of, of contesting it or even asking about it. Or if they're gonna make a move to move out of an individual private home into a congregate living setup, they don't know the questions to ask 
What kind of food is it? What kind of people are there? What are the rules? Can I have a dog? Uh, how about children in the place? And a dozen other questions, all of which, if you don't know enough to ask, you will be pushed. Yeah. And all of those questions are under the chapter called Health Choices. Yeah. Art, we're going to take a short pause, and we'll be back with our guest, Art Linkletter, author of Old Age is Not for Sissies, published by Viking. Welcome back. We're talking with Art Linkletter, author of Old Age is Not for Sissies, and we're coming to you from L'Hermitage Hotel in Beverly Hills from one of their penthouse suites. Art, the beginning of the book begins with sort of case studies. Yes. A lovely story, and yet so tragic, about Helen, who is left living next to the people that she shares a driveway with. Yes. I thought that it was good to start the book instead of on a pedantic or professorial, even a encyclopedic tone, to get down to what we're really talking about, and that is human beings. Yeah. For instance, we find that a great many doctors and nurses and helping homes uh, handle diseases and not people. Mm -hmm. It's the person that counts. And so I have two kinds of examples in the book. In the first chapter, I have unknown people who are in situations that are interesting and worthwhile. Then I have my other favorite chapter, which is the famous old people who are buddies of mine, uh, yeah. starting, of course, uh, with people like George Burns, who at 94 or so is uh, going like a steamroller, yeah. and Betty White, who is really, uh, it's hard for me to recognize her as an old person. She's so youthful she and bright. She is definitely bright. not old, and I don't even go old, 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 young, any of those categories you mentioned. She is Betty White. That's and it. yet in age, she has become an older person. And one of the things she says that I re recount in my interview with her is that when she had two deaths in her family, her husband yeah. and her mother, she said she had the privilege of being with them through all those difficult times while they were dying. And the use of the word privilege gives you a good indication of the kind of a person Betty White is. She is wonderful. I did have the privilege to speak with her art. You also bring out, as you go through places in this book, something I didn't know, that hospices now, when you talk about dying, can be covered by Medicare insurance. Yes, and hospices have two, op two functions. One is, uh, under certain circumstances, you go to this warm, comfortable, uh, caring place to die, or you can have hospice-trained people come into your home where many people, including me, first would prefer to die, yeah. surrounded by my own things, but treated in the ways that only hospice trained people can make your death uh, uh, dignified and comfortable and caring. And included in the book, too, is how to make out a living, a t what is it, the living, living will, will that says no heroic measures if you don't want them what to do if I am no longer uh, able to communicate with somebody. That's right. It clearly sets forth at a time when you are rational and uh, thoughtful what you want to do when you get to the point where they're just keeping you alive with the, the same yeah. sort of devices you keep a vegetable alive. You know, Art, I mean, there's a part of me as we're talking, I love this click in my head that says, you know, you may end up being the Dr. Spock for uh, anybody, <laughs> a senior citizen, because this book, like when, as a mother for it, when my child was younger, anything I couldn't figure out for myself, I had a place to go to say, oh, that's what it means. This book does that, too, for the, the child or the parent who is aging. Yes, and of course, let's not forget the people who are 40 and 50 who should be thinking about these things yeah. and should brush through the book in anticipation of using it later more, uh, on a page-by-page page basis, yeah. because the curious thing about life has been that through centuries of time, people did not generally age. They died. So there was no preparation for age. Yeah. There was preparation for death. But uh, for instance, when I was born, my life expectancy was 48. Mm -hmm. When the Republic was founded by our founding father, the average person could expect to live to be 35 years of age. 
And it, now it's what, 75? 74 and 5 yeah. for, uh, for a mix of the two. And every three years and nine months, yeah. a child who is born can expect to live a year older than the one before. Well, I am blessed that I have a mother who's 84 and a mother-in-law 96. So much of this book is very pertinent to me. I have seen my mother, I must say, fill out Medicare forms. I don't know how people learn to fill it out. They will if they read this book. We have tried to take the gobbledygook out of the bureaucratic rulings that concern yeah. Social Security and Medicare and Medigap and other financial things. The whole chapter on finance uh, explains for a lot of people who should know earlier but don't, a lot of very, very simple, straightforward, elemental, elementary things about what to do with the handling of your money. Oh, listen, Art, I would say also important is that part about scams, Medicare insurance scams, that you point out in the book there is a percentage that most people only spend under 60 days in a hospital. That's right. So all of that great insurance, oh, if you're there over 60 days, we cover all the costs, you're either dead or you're home. Well, there is one other thing about that kind of insurance that I must point out, and that is it's like earthquake insurance. I, I have lived in this town for 45 years, and I always have earthquake insurance. <laughs> okay. And so you might think yeah. that that was useless, but I always have the thought that something catastrophic could happen. Yeah. Now, if you can afford it, you should have insurance for whatever you think might happen to you, even mm -hmm. if it probably won't. Yeah. So that is a, an area, a it's a gray that. area there. Yeah. You, can, you can be very conservative and have just the insurance the percentages tell yeah. you you're going to need, but if you can afford a little more, it doesn't hurt to have that bet. <laughs> There's also a great line in this book about the two friends who go to a nursing home or it's a sort of retirement home. Yes. And the line was about it was seeing the same people in the same restaurant every night and every day of her life, and it wasn't the right. Art, we're going to take a short pause, and we'll be back with our guest, Art Linkletter, author of Old Age is Not for Sissies. Welcome back. We're coming to you from L'Hermitage Hotel in Beverly Hills, and we're talking with Art Linkletter, author of Old Age is Not for Sissies. And it sure is, and, and really the subtitle, Choices for, for Senior seniors, American, is, yeah. That's the real title, actually. The Old Age is Not for Sissies is a selling title. It's yeah. funny, it's cute, yeah. and they say, oh yeah, that's right. But the Choices for Senior Americans is the working title that means that we offer you in this book a lot of choices. How to live, how to eat, how to exercise, how to pick friends, how to travel, how to Elder travel. Hostel. I think that is the greatest uh, contribution. If you go aboard a love boat, which is a glamorous motion picture yeah. concoction, you will see the entire boat filled with gray-haired ladies looking for a spare man. Yeah. They're out for fun. They're not out just to uh, slide. Uh, well, haven't you seen those ads that are for men who are widowed to come and work the boat? Yes. And just be, you know, somebody who'll tell someone, you look pretty tonight. That's right. Yeah. I tell you, at every age, there is a sexual attraction which has really nothing to do, basically, with jumping into bed with somebody, yeah. but is the attraction of the opposite sex and the reason you comb your hair in the morning the reason you wonder if you're going to see somebody cute today. Yeah. And those are the things, the holding of the hands. Sex goes on as long as you're alive and have any feeling toward the other opposite sex. Yeah, it's body contact. And eye contact. Look at yeah. me looking at you right now. Why? Well, Don't I you feel better. anything? <laughs> <laughs> all the way down to Australia. Uh, well, I thought you were going to say all the way down to my heels. <laughs> no. By the way, one of the things I think that does keep a Betty White alive and so sparkly and uh, George Burns and uh, Phyllis Dill, show business, they are doing things they love. And that is part of the thing that keeps the juices flowing, Art. And That's I'm sure right. for the same for Art Linkletter. And it's the same for a lady who may be in a wheelchair and blind, who calls up people who are less well off than she is and cheers them up because volunteerism. 
Yeah. And being a part of something, whether it's a welcome wagon or whether it is being a foster grandparent. Most important, yeah. All those things, not just show business, where you feel wanted, where you feel needed, and where you feel that you've given something. You know, Art, I have to apologize. I had no idea, and I suppose, as I said, my ignorance of the perceptivity of Art Linkletter till I read this book. And in many ways, you know, you are a minister without a named pulpit because not that you are preaching, but you are offering in this book. I mean, you know, I sound like I published it. I am just so thrilled about the information you have here. I think whatever sensitivity or perceptivity, as you put it, I have, has always been a part of my life. I'm a very sensitive person, but the 20 years that I have spent since my daughter's death mm -hmm. in the drug abuse field, lecturing, writing, counseling, talking to young people and yeah. parents, has made me a much better person and much more caring and more perceptive about hurting people and how they can be stroked. So I've moved that sensitivity into the area of people who are, in many cases, slipping into old age with a very negative attitude towards old age, yes, towards themselves. Suicide is very prevalent in senior citizens. We, all older people, have been kidded, caricatured, stereotyped by cartoonists mm -hmm. and motion picture people to the point where old people have been conned into thinking they're a bunch of whining, senile, incapable, dependence and this is not true yeah. just go out and get into a party any place I can tell you about where a bunch of older people are and you're gonna have activity and fun it's absolutely contradicts this whole business of, of, of a bunch of old tired nothings. Art you mentioned about your daughter's death that it also is the beginning of this book about the losses you and your wife have sustained with your son also being yeah. killed in a car accident. Yes. Uh, one says, how? How did you survive? You survive principally because you have to survive. You also survive because, in my case, I had a wonderful family. I mm -hmm. had three remaining children and a wife I've been married to for 53 years. We're a close, sharing, caring family. I had wonderful memories of a family of the two lost children participating in trips to Russia and to Israel and to camp and all the wonderful memories which are worth everything. Yeah. And also I subscribe to the John Wooden principle and he first elicited this statement. Things turn out best for the people who make the best of the way things turn out. Yeah. And you have to do it. Yeah. Art, did you have film with voices of the children that you've been able to save through the years? Yes, yes. I've had about, I have about 600 five-minute programs because they were only five minutes out of the 30 minutes. Yeah. A lot of people forget the other 25 minutes. They come up to me and they say, always used to watch your show with children. And I say, well, what about all the magazine things no, I was no, doing? No, I meant with Diane and with your son. Oh, with my own children. Yeah. I have uh, many uh, films of them, and we play them from time to time I because they were on helpful. the Christmas show every yeah. year. I find that, again, one bit of advice to people in this book, before anybody goes, get them on videotape with the voice it is helpful it almost be beyond the memory keeps them alive for you oh yes very much yeah. very much I think that uh, the business of growing old whether you're ever rich or famous or powerful carries with it some kind of dignity and honor simply because growing old means that you have lived through tragedy yeah. failure success, unexpected things, and older people deserve one of my golden rights for older yeah. people is consideration and respect because they have gotten a, a doctorate degree in life. Surviving. In living, surviving. Art, we're going to take a short pause and we'll be back with our guest, Art Linkletter, author of Old Age is Not for Sissies, published by Viking. Welcome back. We're coming to you from L'Hermitage Hotel, and we are with Art Linkletter. Art, on, on a happier sort of side, yes. 
the traveling the advice on how to travel there's a whole section in the book about where to get discounts if you're over sixty five and, and you get discounts everywhere yeah airplanes hotels uh, food when people say to me aren't you haven't changed a bit you look just like you did 35 years ago. I say, well, and how come when I walk up to a motion picture cashier's window, she automatically gives me a senior citizen's discount yeah. without asking for any identification? <laughs> Your friend's eyes have aged the same. That's the whole point. Uh, there's also the section we should tell people I didn't know and I think so helpful about Social Security. Yeah. I don't know how you did all of the research or what's more important, the plumbing, the editing to know put in what is essential. Yes, and I must confess as an author that that part I've had less to do with than the rest of the book. Okay. Because I find that digging into factual information about insurance and social security and all the rest is, is confusing to me too. Mm -hmm. So I had some experts go over it and reduce it to language uh, that anybody can understand and in simple terms in fact, I read it after it had been put down that way, and I understood it, and I thought, if I can understand it, yeah. anybody can understand yeah. it. That is the part that I think is, again, Social Security, and also if your spouse dies, will I have an income coming in? Learning all of the facts about how to survive afterwards is, is the part, and including here food, how to eat to be nutritious. Yes, when you're and, past and with, with recipes. Yeah. And these were derived from a nutritional expert from a major university, especially research for older people, because I'm not a cook, obviously. And also, I might say that when we get into these technical things, especially the Medicare and Social Security, it also tells you, even if you read the book and read the article and still, the chapter that is, and still are confused, where to call mm -hmm. to get additional advice and yeah. get clearance, because some people don't know where to call. Art, your life now, you are off to, I left, Australia. Yes. But you're going to be the, you are appointed by the President to be the... Commissioner General. Commissioner General. Of the United States exhibit at the Brisbane World's Fair. But it also carries with it, I'm happy to say, the full rank of ambassador. How could I have addressed you and not called you the honored Art Linkletter? Honorable. Honorable, yes. You get that right, because it's the first time I've ever been honorable, and I want it to said right. And... Uh, uh, Ronnie Reagan, who is a very dear friend of mine, yeah. we've done many things together, knows that I have been in Australia as a businessman for 35 years. I've had sheep stations mm -hmm. and cattle stations and, and real estate in Australia, and I go there almost every year. So I'm going to my second home when I go to Australia for their 200th birthday party. How long will it last? From April 30th until October 30th. Uh -huh. And I will be there at a number of the important times, like the opening and, and uh, Battle of the Coral Sea Day, is a very important holiday in Australia, which you may never have heard of. I didn't know it was there, but I do know some people who were at Coral Sea. Well, that saved the neck and everything else yeah. of Australia. So they celebrate that day for the Americans. It was a celebration of our saving Australia from the Japanese. Yes. And then I'll be down for the 4th of July, which is our national holiday. And I'm also going to speak at an international drug conference being convened. And I'll be on what they call Telnet, which is the worldwide television network of the government, with the top drug officials of the world being brought there, and I will be the uh, one of the principal speakers. Art, you mentioned Ronald Reagan, and of course that means Nancy Reagan, and yes. just say no. You had a child who was lost to drugs. Yes. It's more than being able to just say no, isn't it? Great deal more. Yeah. The idea of just saying no is good, yeah. but it is not that simple. And unfortunately, the word just makes it sound easy. Just say no. Yeah. In, when a child is out with his sweetheart or his peers or his people he looks up to, uh, saying no to them requires a lot of guts and a lot mm -hmm. of preparation. And I like to say that the kid is best served by his parents in being prepared how to say no, not just say no, mm -hmm. how to say no, and what you should say so you don't demean yourself in the eyes of your friends. But isn't it also a step further in prohibiting or putting more, uh, I suppose, fines or criminal actions to keep it from coming into this country? 
that's part of it, but not the big part. The big part is in the home and in the education, and those are the slow acknowledgement of the fact that drugs are a terrible thing for anybody, and I mean legitimate drugs as well. Yeah. Well, that again in this book about senior citizens who oh, are yes. over-medicated. Uh, I have yeah. a big, uh, big warning in the book yeah. about how to pick your pharmacist. Most people think, well, picking a doctor is yeah. important. I understand that, and I tell a lot about that. But I say, pick your pharmacist. They he are, ought to know. That's right. And they, he's also the one that's going to tell you, is it generic you need or the actual to save money? Art, I'd like to present you with L'Hermitage Hotels, secretary in a box to take with you to uh, There's Australia. a girl in here? Well, better. It's got everything you need, like scissors and sticky paper and all the rest. And L'Hermitage Hotels Cologne for Men. Thank you. And their pen to autograph my book. And I thank you from every American and any person who reads this book. If you would like a copy of our publication, Good Books, write to me, Connie Martinson, P.O. Box 69, 1640. Los Angeles, California, 90069, or look for our column in Beverly Hills Today, West Hollywood Today, all of the California Press Bureau's newspapers. We'll tell you about some other books we've liked recently. And um, The New World of Travel, Arthur Froma's book. You want some bargain? Or if you're coming to L.A., look around at Le Parc or Bellage, some of the other hotels in this area. And it's a great book about traveling. Uh, another book, if you have somebody younger, the scholarship book. And maybe even if for senior citizens going back to university and want a degree, this is a book beautifully laid out about where to get some financial help for going back to college. Excellent book put out by Prentice Hall. And support your local library. Go in take out a card, and if you are a senior citizen, go look for the division that has books with larger print. Don't stop reading because you're having trouble seeing. There are books that are printed in larger print for senior citizens or for people who have problems with their eyesight. And support an organization called Reading is Fundamental, which helps children learn to read. And if you can read or you have somebody, even yourself, start preparing for the future. There's no shock or earthquake in your life if you know what's coming. Do not miss reading. Old age is not for sissies. We'll see you next week. Art, thank you so thank very you. much, both for coming and for the book. Connie Martinson Talks Books has been taped at L'Hermitage Hotel, Hotel de Grande Classe, Beverly Hills, California.